<laughs> got new features. So, of course, as usual lately, I have decided to pop on here. Um, I was actually in the middle of printing orders um, for some of the books that have been ordered. So, if you ordered a book, um, it is going out today. Um, going out today. Grand rising, grand rising, everyone. Grand rising. Peace, beloved. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, all my new babies. I see we got a lot of new followers um, or whatnot. Like I was just saying, I was in the middle of print orders. Um, we got uh, Peace, beloved. Um, a new book. Uh, the new books just came in, so I'm shipping those out today. If you order the book, um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, in case you knew, I'm trying to find one. Oh, let's see. Thank you. Um, I have a workbook out called A Journey to Self. I'm trying to get the glare off of it. There's a workbook. Um, it's about, it's short. It's to me. <laughs> it's about 40 some pages, almost 50 pages. Um, about 18 sections. Um, it's to help you get back to your original self is to help you kind of remove the distractions, identify what the issues are, identify things that you're challenged with, um, making plans, being disciplined, figuring out what you need to be committed, doing a lot of things that I felt helped me on my journey on being very balanced, being very centered, um, and grounded spiritually, um, through this awakening process. So the workbook is out. The journals are up. Um, you can get the hardback journal and you can get the printed journal, but that's not what I came on here for. Anyway, I was in the middle of printing the things and I was thinking about, I came across some information some years back and I was actually talking to my mate yesterday about it. Um, dealing with the symbols and these are the original African oracles. Um, when you look up the word civil, civil means oracle or somebody who can uh, speak from sight. So somebody like me who would like, for lack of a better word, fortune tell or can help assist with things that are going on in the future. Um, and the information came to me initially because of someone saying um, my, my correlation before I decided to start this particular journey. Um, to the civils and that I needed to look into them, um, specifically three African. Um, back then, they were kind of looked at as witches as well. Um, and I didn't follow through at that time. But the information came to me while, again, while I was fasting. And Grand Rising, Grand Rising, everyone coming in. So as I was searching, I came across this wonderful oracle system and this is melanated created <laughs> um it has what i do love about her particular system is that it has a lot of history i am a history or a information um type of person so when you give me something that you say that you think i should work with i love the fact that this book gives you a lot of insight on the Sybils, on what was going on, on the reason why they are not as talked about or recognized as they should be. Um, not only is this Oracle system a wonderful system, so it's the Sybils Oraculum. Um, I really feel like y'all should go and support this sister. Um, it came in this really nice envelope. So you get the book and you get your cards. Um, but there's another sister and I'll talk about her probably tonight. I'll probably come back on at seven. Um, I really, really enjoyed her book as well. And she talks about how the Sybils were written out. And this was the shift between the matriarch and the patriarch. Okay. The shift between the matriarch and the patriarch. I'm going to post a picture of cats and coconuts. Um, I'm going to post a picture on my page. Um, and why that whole system happened. So I'm not, anybody who know me, I never claim to be a feminist. Definitely not that. 
Um, I don't feel like it serves a purpose. Um, that's my personal opinion, and I could go deeper, but I'm not. Um, I am very aware of how important there it is to have a balance between the divine feminine and divine masculine, though. And I do feel like it should be one or the other. It should be a conversation that needs to be had specifically within our community um, to create that balance. So what I wanted to do, and I will be trying to look at my book, is pull a reading for this week to guide us. And that's what I do love about these cards in particular is that they're more of a guiding system than, oh, you're going to have a tower moment. No, it'll tell you what you need to be asking yourself as you're going through this week. Okay. So, one more. Let's see. Got a lot of action cards. Y'all, so I hope y'all full moon was amazing. Mine was. I hope y'all actually got to work with that full moon energy. Peace, beloved. Grand rising, everyone that just came in. Grand rising. Peace, peace, peace. Um, now these are called, so it's the Sybil Oraculum. It's the Oracle of the Black Doves of Africa. So if you look up Sybil, um, Oracles, then you'll see, you'll find it. If you look up Sybil Oracles, um, you'll find it, um, online. Just Google it. And I promise you, like, they're the only ones that's out here like this. I'm seriously thinking about creating my own version. Um, the artwork in these are, like, mosaic. So, I don't know if, without that glare being on there, if y'all can see it. So, they're very mosaic, um, the artwork. I want mine to be more of a homage. When I saw this and the more I've been studying, I've been thinking about doing some that are more of a homage to the actual symbols themselves and having them incorporated in the card system itself because there's not a lot of card systems out here. And considering that divination was their their thing, um, yeah. well, we ain't got no card system. We got, and then I want to have a right representation um, because they were heavily connected to the Greek and Roman era um and their dynasty so a lot of the greek and roman goddesses that we know are misrepresent re misrepresented let's say that they're not caucasian and whitewashed as we see them they are actually african descent so i want to do uh something that is going to represent in our descent, um, in our nature, in our culture. Um, so the first card that we got is this guy's. The second card that we receive for this week is Rhythm. I wish this glare wasn't so crazy. And the third card, I've been looking at this one, is Transcendence. All right, and then the overall energy because I'm pulling it away. They she has an actual way you're supposed to use them, but y'all know I'm a rebel. Defense, all right. So let's look. So the way she normally uh, breaks down her cards is like there's a core card, there's two action cards, and there's a projection card. Um, so you can either break it down where you're pulling one from each one, or you can break it down where you're pulling. The way that I pull, I always pull three main energies and then I'll go back and pull um, an overall energy if that's what I feel like doing. Let me see what card is this. So, 138. Let's go to the book and see what they say. Grand Rising P. It's a lot of y'all up this morning. Ain't y'all at work? <laughs> y'all ain't working or something i came on here just to pop on right we always rebels doing stuff our own way okay so the meaning for this is to survive you must enhance or further develop other qualities within yourself all personality types exist within us 
I say, I always say that, and they may be assessed when needed. Adaption is not being fake. Sometimes it is the only way to survive. So this is about tapping into all elements of ourselves. This is a week that we want to pay attention to. How are you utilizing all components of who we are? Because sometimes we only like show one face or we show a certain dynamic, okay, um, of who we are. But literally, and I say this, the reason I laugh is because I say this even with the Orisha. Sometimes I tell people, I'll be like, you are looking at the Orisha as if it is outside of who you are. You might have an Orisha or a energy that is over your head, but let's be very clear. All those energies exist within you because it's connected to your lineage and to your DNA. So let's say you are a daughter of Oshun, if you're dealing with Orisha or you're, you know, like my reincarnation is Aset. Okay, my reincarnation is Isis. So if that is my energy, that doesn't mean that's my only energy. That might mean that most of my life experiences, most of the things that I go through is going to be very connected to our set energy. I.e. why I got all these damn kids. <laughs> our set energy, Isis energy, a very motherly, nurturing type energy. Okay, but... Does that mean that when it's time for Oya to pop up out the box, that she ain't coming? Does that mean that when it's time for Ogun or Shango to pop up out of that box, that they ain't coming? Yes, all of that energy can come and manifest through me. All right. All of the energy when I call upon it or when I am operating truly connected to who I am, my true self, then I recognize that whenever a situation comes to the forefront, I am able to access that energy. So you need to recognize why and when it's time to pull upon certain energies. Why and when it's time to, you know, access different components of who you are. And I feel like this is a great year to do it because this year is going to pull us and test us in so many ways and ways that we don't even know. It's a very beneficial year, but you have to know how to be a chameleon within this year. How many of you are living in that one body? A whole lot. How many Orishas is it? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot of energies. And if you are not accessing all your, your energies to the best ability, then guess what? You're not really taking a full advantage of this life. Okay? You're not taking full advantage of this life. You're not being in a space where you're saying, um, how can I, I, when it's time for me to be an extrovert, am I pulling on the energy that makes me shine? which for me would be Oshun. That's who I go to. Oshun is my go-to when I know I need to show up and show out in, in a, a certain environment, okay? If I know that I need to be a warrior-like princess, queen, dynamic, I'm going to call on all y'all for either I need transformation or I'm going to call on her to make this throat chakra open up a little bit more. <laughs> All right, if I need somebody to clear that path, y'all already know. So I know who to call on in order to help me and assist me in whatever the circumstances or the environment is. You need to learn all of those aspects of who you are as well. How do you find out who your goddess is like Oshun? Um, you normally would go through somebody who can do like a reading over your head. There's some other ways you could do it too, but if you want to do it properly, that's the way you do it. Um, baby girl said you dreamed of her, you dreamed of Oshun and you don't know what her message was. That could be tricky. And the only reason I say this is tricky because I'm big on, even though I'm talking about Arisha as an example right now, I'm also big on you knowing who your ancestors is. A lot of times people, um, misidentify Arisha's because they think that that's who it is because this is what is promoted especially on social media and on these type of platforms. But this could be like your great-great-grandmother that's coming to you with Oshun spirit. Okay, let's be clear. Like a lot of times, 
The people that are coming to you are your actual ancestors. The people that are coming to you is your higher self or a version of who you are. So you have to pay attention to, is this who that is or is this really an Arisha? Okay. And then once again, that that's a slippery slope that I don't even want to go down because <laughs> I, I know how I feel about that. And I feel like if you're new to this walk, um, you should be more focused on making sure you identify all the energies that are connected to you specifically. Um, but more importantly, know who your ancestors are. There might be an elder in your family or someone who has transitioned in your family that carry the energy of Alekba, that carry the energy of Ogun. But that don't necessarily mean that's who that was coming to speak to you. That might have been your damn uncle. <laughs> Not Ogun, okay? So, this week is about tapping into yourself, knowing all the energies that are needed in order for you to navigate this journey um, more effectively and more efficiently, okay? Rhythm. And once again, I am reading from Civil Oraculum. It's the Oracle of the Black Doves of Africa, which is the oracles, the original oracles. Um, the original Sybils, if you look up the word Sybil, um, you'll see a bunch of white women. Nothing against my um, non-melanated followers. But they chose to write out um, or dismiss our part of history when it comes to... Uh, the oracles and the symbols. All right. So you want to make sure that you, if you are of melanated descent, make sure that you take the time to really study and understand who you are and the power that you come from. Um, specifically, I, I don't see you not being a power, specifically if you are a woman, I don't see you being in a certain space. <laughs> I don't see you being in a certain space after you come across this information. Let me say that. The civil oraculum. And I actually am going to tag this sister. I just started following this sister on um, page. I'm actually going to put her page up. Okay. Yes, they talk about Medusa. They talk about the importance in, in her original name. Um, I think it was Gorgon. Um, it's her original name. So the first priestesses, um, prophetess. Yes, that's the book that I was telling. Okay, so she springs from earth. I'm gonna see if I can pin yours. I was telling them about that book. Um, she springs from earth. That's the book I was telling y'all about to get. The only thing that I don't like about her book, I'm not gonna say I don't like. Um, it's like telling a story. So she practiced voodoo. Okay. So, because she practiced voodoo, I feel like a lot of the intent behind the message still connects to voodoo. And I, I, I feel like if it was somebody who practiced, I don't know, Ifa, then they would have connected it to somebody else. And if it was somebody who practiced, you know, something different, they would have connected that energy to somebody else. So, that's the only part that I, I had a little bit of beef with. Um... That's the only part. I feel like when you are coming from whatever it is that you come from and this is your intent, then of course you're going to automatically recognize it as being um, connected to Mama Water or you would have connected it to being from Isis, which is really the original origin, which corresponds. Y'all know how the correspondence work, but I feel like it would have been better if she would have did it from a neutral standpoint so people wouldn't have automatically connected it to a certain dynamic that's just my personal opinion you know i respect all walks of life but i do feel like if you would have actually i can see how everything um connects and everybody can so if somebody is learning and they don't know okay i said is isis is 
the different ones where we could say yimmy ya or we could say mama water or we could say whatever you're not gonna know no better and that's the part that i kind of had beef with okay second card let me get let me stay on track so i can get off of here <laughs> what did i say rhythm so the rhythm um meaning so this one is a core card so the way that they do their core card is doing it connection as far as you ask questions it says if you get the rhythm in a reading um the oraculum may be asking you to stop and consider the following questions related to your situation are you full of enthusiasm to begin something new but have not considered the hard work that it requires is the sudden feeling of ecstasy or hopelessness going to last long enough to really justify the decision to change the rhythm of your life? Mm. Are you spiritually fortified to face any challenges that may appear? That means do you got your spiritual stamina up? Are you overly relying on artificial or external means to maintain your own rhythm? Are you continuing to dance even though the beat of your life is becoming monotonous? In what ways may you be seeking to control the natural rhythm of life at this time? So this is about the rhythm of life. Okay. 5157. Okay, so this is about, we got the first card of saying, hey, are you tapping into all elements of who you are? Are you tapping into everything that you are? Everything of your existence. All right. Now, we got the rhythm card. The rhythm card is saying, hey, are you willing to try new things? Are you thinking about how much work it is in order for you to do this new venture, this new experience? Are you willing to change your dynamic? 157, you'll love this one. You're going to love this one. I think you appreciate it the way I appreciate it. Um, are you willing to really reevaluate where you are? So what are you doing right now that's reevaluating where you are and where you need to be going? Do you need to change the beat? Are you still dancing to the same old song? Which could also mean, are you still doing the same old stuff? Singing the same old song. Are you still in victim mode? Because you choose not to operate in your higher power. Because you choose not to operate in a new dynamic. Your evolution of who you are. Are you stuck? Are you stuck? <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever won a huge jet? <laughs> you need to change your beat. Okay. So transcendent is our last card. Let me see what is this connected to. This is going to be our action card. Let's go back. Now what I do love about this set as well, real quick, um, is not only, and I'll show you with this one. So with the action cards, they not only give you a script, like they'll give you a quote. They'll give you a description of what's on the card. Um, they'll give you symbolism. They'll give you the goddess or God energy that's connected to it. And then it'll give you the meaning of the card. Peace, beloved. Peace, peace, peace. Okay, so this one is actually saying this is an important test, even if it doesn't appear to be. Maintain the right thought, put the ego in check, and take the high road for the best outcome. All right. This is an important test, even if it doesn't appear to be. Maintain the right thought, put ego in check, and take the high road for the best outcome. Oh, that means somebody about to trigger y'all. <laughs> somebody is about to get on your nerves or trigger you. And if they get on your nerves or trigger you, you need to take your higher self. This is when you might need to pull. Instead of you pulling out, Oh, yeah, you might want to pull out Yimmy Ya, somebody who is compassionate, somebody who is nurturing. You might want to pull out a different energy 
this week when you're being tried. So we've gotten three different dynamics. We got the dynamic of this is a time for us to really explore who we are. Explore who you are on so many different levels. Explore who you are um, and all the energies that you possess. All right. And know when to pull it out. Know when to be energetic. Know when to calm down. Know when to be compassionate. Know when to be a warrior. There's a time and a place for each energy. All right. The other thing was rhythm. What rhythm are you operating in? Are you stuck? Are you doing the same old song and dance you was doing in 2019? Or are you willing to do the work and venture into this new life of yours, this evolution of who you are in order for you to make the best life, in order for you to really blossom um, as the higher spirits that you are supposed to be. And then transcendence. Transcendence is saying, hey, because I am in my more evolved self, because I'm in my higher self, because I'm in the evolution of who I am, I'm able to make choices and decisions that serve me instead of go against me. I'm making choices and decisions that actually help and guide and assist instead of take away from who I am. All right. So those are the energies we're working with this week. Make sure y'all are mindful of what's going on. I want to pull one from my old deck. I'm actually about to get rid of some. I might actually sell them. Auction them off. Maybe I'll do a giveaway. I think I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm going to figure that out. Because I really am in a space now where I really only want to work with um, cards that are for us by us. And then, um, I also want to be very intentional. So I probably, I have a lot, as you can imagine, I have a lot of decks, a lot. <laughs> and I don't, I don't talk all y'all up. <laughs> so I, wind is all about purification. How are we operating in the space that we're cleansing the people who no longer serve us, the situations and environments that no longer serve us out of our lives um, in order to make room for the new? How are we standing independently on our own? Who are we at the core? Who are we at the core? Who are you? Have you identified that? That's one of your number one questions. Who are you? Not the label. Okay. Not, oh, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, you know, I'm a daughter of Oshun, not none of that, okay? Not none of that. Who are you? Like, really, who's the spiritual person? Who's the higher self? Who's the evolution? Um. Okay, so, and I didn't come on here yesterday, so I normally, what I've been doing is signing in a homework assignment out of the journey to self and i'll post it again and our second section is the seed of the soul perfect it says when you allow yourself to not only sit still but sit still and dig deep in your soul and deal with your stuff you open up a pathway to really focus on your healing it will trigger emotions that make you want to return to your old habits and your comfort zones, distracting you from reaching the goal and making you feel safe just for the moment. That's just a false illusion of safety. Release the need to be comfortable during these transformations. This is perfect for what I just read. <laughs> this is hard stuff and the change we require takes work. In this section, identify your comfort zone, the things you revert back to um, when your journey challenges you to grow. What are your growth responses? So what all of this section is basically talking about, typically when we're going through our transformation, when we're going through these transitionings, um, when we're going through our growth, our awakening, um, we hit these spaces and these pockets in moment in time <laughs> where we start to revert back, backslide as my daddy call it. Um, and you have to be mindful. Are you backsliding? 
Are you going back to what's comfortable for you? That's like leaving a, a person that you know that's a toxic relationship. And instead of leaving and working on you and moving towards the future, you'll tend to slide back to that old person that you know ain't no good, that you know is not in alignment with who you are. So you want to make sure that, um, like I said, I'll post it on the page as well. What are What are your reactions? When the universe is pushing you to grow, when the universe is saying, hey, it's time for you to step up, what's your growth response? What is your typical response? Okay, and then how do we avoid that? That's like being, you say you want to be vegetarian. And all of a sudden, you know, you out with your friends. Next thing you know, you know, I ate you a chicken wing. I'm just saying, just saying. What is your growth response? Because a lot of times we make choices because it's comfortable, because it's easier for me to do what's known than for me to do what's unknown. Okay, it's easier for me to do what's known compared to what the unknown is. I don't know what's on the other side of that that you're pushing me to. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to just go back to doing this. I don't want to exhibit discipline knowing that this is what's going to help me grow. How can I shift my perspective in that? Okay, so I'll post that homework assignment. That's your homework assignment for this week. Or what not. The universe is telling us to dig deep inside ourselves, tap into all our energies, who we are, what we are going to be, or who are we evolving into. They're about to push your ass off the cliff. <laughs> You're not ready, but they are. Oh yeah. I say getting pushed off the cliff. I don't put I don't get pushed off the cliff as much before and now as I I used to. I, they used to have to push me off. Now I just go. I'll be like, I don't even want to be pushed. I don't feel like being dragged. Brandon, you feel attacked. I'm sorry. This year is about us doing for real work. We're going to get to the to, to the real stuff this year. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm really focused on making sure that we get to the real stuff. And that we don't um, keep sitting on this fence. All right. So... Once again, if you order the book, the book went out today. I am literally putting labels on them as I speak. Um, if you're interested in getting the workbook so you can follow along as we do homework assignments, um, it gives you space to read, write. Um, the journals are a little bit more in detail. The journals actually have where you can do your divination on there. Um, you can record weekly and daily responses. Um it has a calendar in there. Um, it has, I'll show y'all the journal. Hopefully, I can show y'all one um, this evening. I'll show you a journal this evening. I probably will have the hardback. So, I'll show you that one this evening so you can see everything that's involved. It is about 300 pages. It's close to it. So, it's, it's a little thick. All right. Yay, God, it's a lot. I hope you're using it. I'm actually getting ready to send all of y'all an email before the day is out. Um, the ones who have pre-ordered the book and got the book thus far. Um, I'm actually putting a course together just for y'all to follow through um, with that starts in February. But y'all get the ones who pre-ordered the book get to get in the class for free. Okay. I do, Kristen. I have some. I do have a few um, extras. That I ordered this time because the last time I ran out so quick. Yes, because I feel lost sometimes and don't know what to do or how to feel. Oh, you shouldn't feel lost. Lost is a good feeling, though. I know it sounds hard. Um, I'd rather for you to feel lost because that let me know you're trying. Okay, that lets me know that you're trying. You're striving to get back to yourself. Um, a lot of times, and I, I've been heavy on this, and I'm going to say this probably every time, okay? Every time. <laughs> Everything y'all looking for is outside of you. It's not outside of you. Quit thinking that if I hold this crystal, it's going to make me communicate better. No, it's just going to intensify the need to communicate better. But guess what? That's already there. 
if I hold this wand, it's going to make me be more powerful because it's got rose quartz and all my other little goodies on there. No, that's already there. You're the power. You're the can do it. You're the, the energy source. These cannot work without your own energy. These cannot, you know, pull out what is meant to pull out if you are not the source behind it. So being lost is a good thing. Okay, um, really, really understand that it's not a destination like that. Destination is here. It's nowhere else. It's here. So when you lost, just take time to sit there and really just get back centered to who you are. Even meditation. Like meditation is really about experiencing nothing. It's not about experiencing the things that a lot of people experience. The ultimate goal is to experience your 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 emptiness. And I know that don't don't make sense sometimes because a lot of times when you are in, there's levels to meditation. And you'll go to a level where your mind racing. You'll go to a level where you're seeing all kind of different beings and entities. You go through a level where you see a bunch of colors and then you get to another level and then there's a level after that. But the ultimate level is to be able to sit and actually experience nothingness, emptiness, this this vast space and it doesn't have walls or a ceiling or any type of picture or form to it. It's just there. You are able to fit, experience who you are for real at the core. Um, a lot of people can't get to that space. Um, so being lost is a great place to be at because you are not identifying with anything. Okay. You're you're not identifying. You're not attached. A lot of times we get lost because we're trying to attach or validate ourselves through dynamics that are outside of who we are. Everything. When I say everything. Literally everything that you need is in you. Every answer, every awakening, peace, beloved, peace, everyone that's coming in, every dynamic, I'm saving it, is in you. Literally. Y'all don't need, y'all really don't need me. I'm just here to be a mirror. You really don't need me. I'm just here to reflect what you already know. I'm here to remind you and awaken in you what you already know and who you already are. And that's the way that, you know, anybody that you come across, anyone that you actually come across or, you know, read about or any tool that you use, this is a mirror reflection of who you are. You see this rose course, this rose course is supposed to be a mirror of you. It's reflecting who you are. You think that it's love, but no, that's you. So you have to kind of like put it back into that little. And when you're feeling lost and you're feeling lonely, that just means sit still. Sit still. Go back. Go back inward. Identify where is that coming from? What is the root of this? Why am I feeling like this? Why is this coming up? So you can't, because then what normally happens when y'all get into that lost or lonely space, it go back to what we talked about, the homework assignment. And then you starting to make responses that are from your comfort self. Now, because you feel lost, now you go back to, you revert back to your old ways. You stop meditating. You ain't praying no more. <laughs> You ain't using the universe for what it's for, what it's really for. You start doing shit that you know you ain't got no business doing. Because you feel lost. Don't do that. Okay? Don't do that. Pull on your ancestors. Pull on your spirit, guys. Pull on your divine circle if you have one. Willfully, y'all have one. Willfully, you have one. If you don't have one, create one. All right? I feel like I got so much to say, but I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't get caught in the rabbit hole. 
as I like to say. Don't go down the rabbit hole. Um, Muji is a really good person for y'all to listen to. Um, he's very Zen and he's not so much um, African centered um, if you are looking for that. But um, he is one of my favorite teachers. Uh, his name is Muji, M O O J I. Um, he's one of my favorite teachers because he teaches a lot from a space of get all the distractions out of your mind, move all of that away from you. Okay. Just go inward. Just go be still and go inward. And I can honestly say it's been one of the most helpful, um, teachers that I can identify with for me. All of us have our own intimate journey, but for me, in, the, in my part of my journey, um, he's one of the most influential. All right. I love you guys. Let me finish doing what I was doing. I'm supposed to be working. I'm working. <laughs> um, let me finish doing this. Um, like I said, um, the ones of y'all who have pre-ordered the book, y'all know um, to look out for an email. If not today, definitely no later than tomorrow. Um, about the class that will start up. I will put up a flyer about the class that starts up that is connected to my workbook journey to self. Um, it's going to be um, rather reasonable um, just because of some things that I'm feeling at this moment in time, some insight that I've gained from my ancestors over the weekend. Um, so I, I, I really hope that y'all will be able to join me and it will start next month, February 3rd. I think. Okay. All right. Ashe, love you guys. Peace.